All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to show you why junior developers are stuck, why junior developers are failing to get hired and why junior developers will be in absolute pain starting this year when it comes to like learning that first developer job. OK, because, you know, the times have changed, you know, and juniors and their skills and their portfolios are still stuck in, you know, 2005, 2010. And today I'm going to review this portfolio and I'm going to show you what would I do different if I would be, uh, I guess, uh, Melina. Right. So I found this on LinkedIn. I don't think I ever spoke with her, but, you know, I'm always seeing portfolios. OK, and uh, it's actually a better website than what most people have, but I want to look at her projects. Okay. And the thing that stood out to me was the fact that she has the Pokedex and the random fun fact generator, the most amazing app. And I want to show you what would I improve, um, over here when it comes to changing this, uh, application. I just want to give you ideas on how to get better because I don't want you to get stuck like probably she is. Okay. So let's open this website. <clears throat> this is a fun fact about dogs. Okay. But this doesn't work anyway. Okay. Take some time. All right. So the first thing that I would do is I would show some loading screen. Probably she's grabbing this, uh, fun facts from an API from a, an outside API and she should so show some loading indicators. So I know she's making an API call. So I should be waiting, you know, for something. She should also disable the buttons so I don't click on random things. And, you know, you saw what happened when I clicked really quick. I got a bunch of flashes with different quotes. And let me show you, because we also have something like this in my program where we have basic requirements and then we have extras. And I think if she would do these extras, then she would get better. So the basic requirements is to show a different quote every single time I click on a button. Very simple, something like this and show a default quote on load. She didn't do that. So basically she only did one thing out of my basic requirements, but then we have some extras and I want to give you this extra so you can improve on your own if you can. Okay. Show quotes from different authors. She's kind of doing this. She's doing like, she's showing quotes from different categories, I guess, but then she can also change the background color for each quote. So, so for example, if I'm, seeing something regarding the planet earth, then I could see some sort of space pictures. Okay. Or some pictures from Africa, some from Asia, some from South America, some from a jungle, some from, I don't know, Bali, etc., etc. When I click on tattoos, I should, I should see different tattoos, right? Maybe a sleeve, maybe a hand tattoo, maybe a face tattoo, etc., etc. She could grab these pictures from Unsplash, which is a website with pictures. They have a free API. She can grab the pictures from there and then she can have dynamic pictures. Um, change the picture of the author. Again, it's a slightly different app, but I hope you get a picture. Okay. Use text to speech to let the user hear the quote, right? So she can have like the Wojak voice that can read these um, quotes or fun facts, and she can have a different voice for each category, right? So imagine here you have a lady, here you have a, a guy, here you have an older lady, and here you have an older guy. Again, we just want to stack up features so we can learn a lot of things. What's the point of learning a lot of stuff if you don't put it into practice? Now, uh, let's see. Allow the user to change the code using the spacebar. So she could allow the user to press the space bar to navigate through different, you know, categories. Another feature, you learn how to use the events. It's amazing, right? Um, if I change the code mid, mid speech, then stop the speech. Very self-explanatory and prevent showing the same quote twice. Again, makes you think, how can I do that? That's how you get better. And, and as you can see, we have like 20 challenges, right? And she, she did one of them. And again, I'm not recommending you to put this in your portfolio. We are just doing this stuff to learn. Uh, because if you have this stuff on your portfolio, you'll be categorized as a junior. You want to have a, like a real product, a real application. Otherwise people will make fun of you. All right. I'm just telling you this for your own sake. Okay. I'm just trying to make your life easier. The other thing that we see here, which is a bit more complicated is this Minecraft thing. And here is what I have an issue with. Okay. If a recruiter comes and sees this, the recruiter doesn't want to 
sign up to your Minecraft app. A hiring manager doesn't want to sign up to your Minecraft app. I understand what you're trying to do. You want to show the fact that you've learned passport, a database and servers and whatnot. But you need to allow the hiring manager, the recruiter to see something before they make a commitment like this. Like probably you've seen ads to certain apps and then you don't want to make an account straight away. You are leading, reading the landing page and you see if this app is for you, right? It takes a big commitment to sign up to something. Why are you making your life harder by making the recruiters and hiring managers having to commit to such a huge thing as signing up? I know you've made it and you are proud of it and you want to show to the world your skills. But if you do this kind of stuff, you will not get hired in my opinion, okay? And I'm not even gonna sign up because it takes too long. But I just wanna show you like how I think and how people think. She has like amazing potential to develop her skills, but she is like here and she should be over here. And now you might be asking, hey, but how do I get to that level, Christian? Well, you have to follow a roadmap, right? You need to get better and better every single day by creating more complex apps. Okay, there is no way around it. Then what you need is to have some sort of guidance. You need to know if you can progress to the next step. Otherwise, you know, I assume she has this problem. Probably you have this problem. You don't know exactly what is the best road to take in order to achieve your goals. If you want to become a remote front end developer, you need to understand that the game is extremely difficult. Okay, no matter what your favorite guru is saying to you, no matter how pumped up you are, programming is hard, getting a dev job is hard, getting a dev job that pays you a lot of money is even harder, and you need the best resources to make the most out of your uh, time invested if you are working a full-time job. The last thing that you want to do is to come home and code without a roadmap, without guidance, without feedback, without getting code reviews. Otherwise, you'll be like driving your car without GPS, hoping you're going to get to the right destination so if you want exactly that if you want guidance a roadmap feedback support the whole game plan done for you apply for a free consultation call and see if we can work together look at my testimonials see if i'm legit see if the guys are legit look them up on linkedin do your own diligence and if you are serious about getting hired this is the best thing that you can do cheers